Good morning. Today is July 4th, 6th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to worship in the environment of Keswick United Church. Located in a piece of land that has been for thousands of years the territories of the Longhouse Confederacy and Ishinabiwaki and Mississauga. We thank the seven nations that signed the William Treaties, which allows us to share this land. We acknowledge the First Nations people, their history, spirituality, languages, and culture. Among the Ojibwa, Anishinaabe, and Chippewas, we acknowledge, in particular, the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation as our close neighbor and friend, with whom we learn to live in peace and friendship. Today is the first Sunday of July. Let's celebrate the birthdays and anniversaries for this month. If you know exactly who they are for the celebration, give them a call after the service. Let's sing a song together for them. Announcements. The next online Zoom meeting for coffee and chatting is, will be on July 6, starting at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome. I shall send out the invitation through email before the meeting. Give it a try if you haven't been joined before. Peace be with you and also with you. Lighting of the Christ Candle We light this candle as a sign of God's Spirit at work in the world. May His light brighten our spirits. May the light of God shining through us brighten the world. Let's sing together the Lord's Prayer.
call to worship. In our sanctuaries, in our hometowns, in the city, we say, God is great and so worthy of our praise. God's praise and reputation extend to the far corners of earth. Let the tongues rejoice. Let our own community rejoice, saying, This is God, our God, forever and always. God is the one who will lead us even to the very end. Come, let us worship. Gathering Prayer Surprising and confounding God, illumine your word to us this day as we ponder its meaning for us and our work. Let it come not as a familiar friend easily forgotten, but as a new spring of water for parched souls. Amen.
Today's responsive scripture is from Psalm 48. We shall proceed after hearing the refrain. Great is God, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Fair and lofty in God's holy mountain, it is the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion in the far north stands the city of the great ruler. In its citadels, God is known as a sure defense. See how the rulers assembled, they raged together against it. But when they saw it, they were astounded, they were dismayed and ready to flee. Trembling came upon them, as anguish comes to a woman in childbirth, as when the east wind blows and breaks up the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so have we seen. In the city of the God of hosts, the city our God upholds forever. We remember your steadfast love, O God, as we gather in your temple. Your name, like your praise, reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with victory. Let Mount Zion rejoice, and the children of Judah be glad because of your judgments. Go in procession around the circuit of Zion, Count the number of its towers. Take note of its ramparts. Examine its citadel. So that you may tell the next generation, such is our God, our guide forever.
The reader for today is Jack Wilson. Today's scripture reading from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James, and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. When he went about among the villages teaching, he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Resilient Leadership Are we more impressed by the success of leadership? What about the challenges that come with? What are these patches? They don't look lovely, do they? Sometimes we may even wonder if they are living or decaying. What about this? A caterpillar. Even though we might look at it from another angle, we might still not find it pretty. Ah, tree bark. A place we can find them all together. Is this tree alive though? It looks leafy, but oh, it provides a lovely shade. A close-up and an image from afar would give us different feels even though the subject matter is the same. This happens with the rainforest, mangrove, Antarctica, modern cities, rural villages, and families. From chapter 5 of the Gospel of Mark, we know that Jesus recently healed a woman suffering from a blood disease and rescued the daughter of a synagogue's leader, people believed to be dead. As the person who performed all these, Jesus was now standing in front of the people from his hometown. Where did this man get all this? It wasn't recognition from them. What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? The words wisdom and power here carried negative meanings. The reason for that was that they knew Jesus since he was a kid. They thought they knew who he was, who were their friends and enemies, they knew his skill sets as well as his whole family. Jesus was a carpenter. 
just a handyman. His mother was a widow who provided weak family support. His brothers and sisters were like any of them, ordinary people, like all the others. At the age of 30, he went away from a, for a while and now came back with some disciples following him. Has he become a rabbi or something? There were rumors about him working miracles. They became hot topics for discussion too. Were they real though? How was it possible? Every single word he spoke and every single deed of his were under scrutiny. No wonder they took offense at him. Jesus was not alone facing this kind of reaction. He said the prophets had the same experience. They thought they were speaking the word of God and acted according to God's instruction. However, their contemporaries felt differently, especially those closely related to them, those who had preconceptions. The preconceptions might refer to their understanding of Jesus and or their under self-understandings. I'm too old for this. I'm not capable of doing this. I haven't made up my mind. I don't want to change. I don't need your help. I have more than enough on my plate. Do these ideas sound familiar? They are like roadblocks that stop us from dreaming, fantasizing, reimagining, and exploring a new and more abundant life. We have been talking about leadership for several weeks already, namely unexpected leadership, authentic leadership, compassionate leadership, and today, resilient leadership. Our lives can be more productive if we can let go of these roadblocks. Don't let ageism, ableism, procrastination, complacency, apathy, and scarcity mindset catch us. An underestimation of God-given talents and potential would prevent us from discovering unexpected leadership. Recognizing how we grew up differently and the different temperaments we have would help us appreciate authentic leadership. The path of life is bumpy. No one can avoid the fact that one would become vulnerable. However, that predicament is essential, without which we can't be passionate leaders and wounded healers. The countrymen and relatives were astounded when, Pete, when Jesus showed up again in the hometown. So was Jesus. He was amazed at their unbelief. Even Jesus couldn't do anything among them because of their refusal. All this, however, didn't stop Jesus from trying. He laid his hands on a field and cured them. He even took advantage of that opportunity to educate the twelve and sent them out two by two. He ordered them not to bring with them any bread, bag, or money in their belts. He let them feel what it was like when there is resistance. Jesus gave them a chance to practice how to trust God for everything, carrying no food, no money, and no, no bags to collect money, accomplishing a mission with primarily the purpose of giving and not getting. The COVID pandemic has been with us, the whole world, for over a year. It changed the life of everyone. Some lost their lives, their families, their friends, and their jobs. Like most businesses and organizations that suffer financially, some churches closed temporarily, while some for good. No bread, no bag, 
no money in the belts is not easy to follow. It's even more challenging with the instruction only to take a staff, to wear a pair of sandals and to put on one tunic on the journey, an order presupposing a mission with minimal protection. Story time. Today I have a short prayer to share with you. It's written by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, called Every New Morning. Every new morning is a new beginning of our life. Every day is a completed whole. This day, today, is the limit of our sorrows and efforts. It is long enough to find God or to lose Him, to keep faith or to fall into sin and shame. Just as the good old son rises every morning anew, so is God's eternal mercy, new every morning. As you might know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a pastor, a famous German theologian and an anti-Nazi spy who sacrificed his life to fight the injustices of the Nazi regime. On April 9, 1945, at the age of 39, he was executed in a concentration camp two weeks before his liberation. This prayer was composed not just for himself, but also for his fellow prisoners, applicable to anyone who's going through intense suffering and is imprisoned in their own mind by their own thoughts and fears. This day, today, is the limit of our sorrows and efforts. His words put people in a world where darkness would return every evening. Darkness is, however, not a hindrance anymore. God has set the boundary, the limit for sorrows and efforts. God's eternal mercy is the foundation on which all can rest, physically, mentally, and spiritually. There are more people like Dietrich Bonhoeffer who show us resilience in the face of difficulty. You could be one of them. Leadership is tough work. Unexpected obstacles come up. Circumstances change. So, what is God calling you, individually and as the church, to do? To keep everything together.
Thank you for your continuous support. The ministry of the church would be hard to continue without it. Let us share our gifts with those in need as a testimony to God's grace. You can make a donation to the church through pre-authorized remittance or through mailing your check to the church office or go online to canadahelps.org and make your donation. Please note that you can now send your donations to Keswick and Ravenshoe United Church by e-transfer. You can find the complete information here, or you can contact the church office for more details. Prayer of Dedication Loving Christ, thank you for teaching us your healing ways and for entrusting us with your message. Thank you for your generosity of bread and clothing and money of which you spoke so long ago. These are items we cannot imagine traveling without and basics that many people struggle to attain. Receive our offering today. May it be used to ease the suffering of those you love here in our hometown and beyond. May our praise extend to the far corners of earth. Amen and Amen. Prayers of the People if you have prayer requests, please send them to me before the next Sunday service. We respect everyone's privacy, so unless I have your consent to share with others, they will stay with me only. With your permission, we shall send your prayer concerns to the church members by email, and they will not appear in this video. Our prayer today is composed of several sessions. After each session, we shall respond together. Let us pray. We thank you for journeying with us, Christ Jesus, and for setting an example of resilience in times of trial. Traveling this road is not easy. We admit we rather play it safe than risk rejection as your disciples. Grant us the strength to be resilient and faltering and determined to become the people you have called us to be. We dream of being your followers with heart and humility, strength and tenacity, servants, not tyrants, following you and emulating your leadership. Yet let us also be contained with whatever hardships we bear for your sake. We believe when we admit our weakness, we discover your strength. Change our hearts and lives, O God, we pray. When the world's leaders fail to act justly, give them wisdom and courage. 
Change our hearts and lives, O God, we pray. When the Church falters in these efforts on your behalf, we renew our spirits and our determination. Change our hearts and lives, O God, we pray. When we second-guess our ability to do your will, restore our sense of purpose. Change our hearts and lives, O God, we pray. When our plans run aground and our offers of help are refused, send us back on the road, Lord Jesus, for your sake. Loving and caring God, we have done everything we've been told, worn masks, stayed home, gotten out shots. Isn't it about time all this is over? Let us remember always that no, it is not over, it's not over for people in so many places we never think about. People whose lives were already a struggle, now overflowing with illness and loss and grief and often with no masks, no shots, no way to stay safe at home. Remind us, God of the whole world, that the whole world is our family, that this won't be all over until it is over for all. And let us do all we can to give our whole world family what we take for granted, hope for a future. Amen. Commissioning and blessing. Let's be joyful when we receive the blessing from God. Strap on your sandals and hit the road, my friends. Shake off the dust of your complacency. Walk with a friend and travel light. Go, proclaiming Christ's message of healing and hope. Go, declaring that hearts and lives can change. Keep going, because Christ gives you authority. Go in the name of Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just go.
Our worship service this morning has come to an end. Remember, you can always reach me by leaving a message in the office or call me directly. See you next Sunday.